Miss Elizabeth was universally loved by everyone during her time in the WWF and in WCW. She was one of those rare wrestling personalities that nobody had a bad thing to say about, from wrestling fans to people involved in the business. Behind the beautiful smile though, Elizabeth had her own personal troubles and these would be brought to light during the last few days of her life. While her last few days would be incredibly sad, it also brought attention to the turmoil Elizabeth was going through at the time. It's hard to believe that someone who appeared so gentle and soft spoken on screen would end up passing away in the manner in which she did. So in this video we will look at the life and career of the first lady of wrestling, Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth was born on November 19, 1960, in Frankfort, Kentucky. After earning her degree in communications, she got into the wrestling business, and at an international championship wrestling show, she met Randall Poffo, who we know as Macho Man Randy Savage. The pair got married in the same year. When Savage came over to the WWF, it wouldn't be long before Elizabeth joined him. Managers of the WWF were, in storyline, throwing themselves at Randy Savage in hopes of becoming the manager of Macho Madness. During an in-ring segment, Macho thanked the managers for their interest, but he selected Elizabeth, who made her way to the ring and joined Savage as his manager. Elizabeth's soft-spoken demeanour would turn out to be an unconventional, but successful, balance to Macho Man's larger-than-life personality. The first big storyline Elizabeth was involved in included George Steele, which is noteworthy because it allowed George to show the softer side to his normal animalistic character. George fell in love with Elizabeth, not in a creepy way, but in more of a doting way, something that angered the macho man, and the rest of the feud kind of wrote itself. The storyline got over huge, and had done a lot to establish both Savage and Elizabeth during their initial years in the WWF. The storyline cast Liz as a damsel in distress in the possession of a controlling macho man, which also in turn gave us, as fans, an interest in Liz's well-being. As time went on, Liz stuck by Macho Man through feuds with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and the Hunky Tonk Man, among others. It was during Savage's feud with Hunky Tonk Man that he turned full babyface, as Hunky would make advances towards Elizabeth and generally treat her poorly, which prompted Savage to retaliate. Hunky Tonk Man would do all he could to get under Savage's skin, and Elizabeth was a key part in making all of this work. When Hulk Hogan lost the WWF title to Andre the Giant, the belt eventually became vacated. Elizabeth became the first female valet to manage the WWF champion at WrestleMania when Macho Man won the gold in the title tournament. From here, Savage and Hulk Hogan would join forces to take down Andre and the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. The Mega Powers vs the Mega Bucks is a well remembered feud and Miss Elizabeth was very much a key part once again in making it all work. Savage and Hogan would call Elizabeth their secret weapon in the match against the Megabucks at the very first SummerSlam in 1988. The tease for the match was that if things got bad, Elizabeth was going to wear panties under her fancy clothes to distract Andre and Ted DiBiase. A strange way to sell pay-per-views, but hey, put nothing past Vince McMahon. Indeed, Elizabeth would reveal her panties and the Megapars won the match. Next would come the eventual breakup of Macho Man and Elizabeth, which, in a strange way, was art imitating life. Hulk Hogan had been getting friendly and overprotective of Elizabeth, something that Savage took offence to. 
Elizabeth would continue to bring both Hogan and Savage to the ring, but the tension was rising between the mega powers. After playing Peacemaker at the Royal Rumble 1989, when Hogan accidentally eliminated Savage, things seemingly calmed down. But Miss Elizabeth got bumped into Savage on an episode of Main Event on February 3rd, 1989. Hogan took Elizabeth away from medical attention and left Randy Savage to take a beating in the ring. This led to Savage letting Hogan fight for himself in a match against the Twin Towers. When Hogan returned backstage, all hell broke loose as Macho Man blindsided Hogan, turned heel and ended the Mega Powers partnership. So now Savage would be defending his championship at WrestleMania 5 against Hulk Hogan and Elizabeth had to pick a side. In the end, Elizabeth said she would remain neutral, but still, she caused issues for both men during the match. This led to her getting sent backstage and eventually Hogan won the match. Not a very big payoff here for Elizabeth, but it's still a well remembered match. Randy would replace Elizabeth with Sensational Sherry as his new manager. Elizabeth would make odd appearances at house shows beside Hulk Hogan and sometimes manage those who were opposing Randy Savage. At WrestleMania 6, Elizabeth appeared in the corner of Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire in their match against Savage and Sensational Sherry. Elizabeth would end up getting physical during the showdown and she ended up costing Sherry and Macho King the match. Elizabeth would continue to work alongside Dusty and Sapphire during the house show loop, but she was mainly kept off TV afterwards. WrestleMania 7 saw Randy Savage booked in a retirement match against the Ultimate Warrior. When Savage lost the match, Sensational Sherry began attacking Randy Savage. This prompted Elizabeth, who was watching in the audience, to jump into the ring, stop Sherry's attack and eventually reunite with the Macho Man to a huge ovation from the audience. It was a great moment for sure and it goes to further highlight just how much of an asset Elizabeth was to the WWF. It also demonstrated just how much people cared for Elizabeth's relationship with Savage. Even after all the bad shit that Savage had done to Elizabeth when he aligned himself with Sherry, the fans were able to forgive the Macho Man and part of that was because the fans loved Elizabeth so much. On June 17th, 1991, during a taping of WWF Superstars of Wrestling, Macho Man Randy Savage proposed to Miss Elizabeth, which she accepted. We, of course now, know that the couple were already married, but this kind of information was not so widely available back in the early 90s. The match made in heaven would go down live on pay-per-view at SummerSlam 1991. This was another well-remembered part of Liz's career. Fans still remember the wedding fondly, unlike the weddings that would occur in wrestling rings in the years that followed. At the reception though, Elizabeth got gifted a snake, which prompted a feud to begin between Macho Man and Jake Roberts. The feud saw Jake the Snake slap Elizabeth at the Tuesday in Texas pay-per-view, one of the more shocking moments in Liz's career. As her real life relationship with Savage was getting seriously rocky behind the scenes, Liz's final WWF storyline included the kiss-stealing son of a gun Ric Flair. Flair had been bragging that he dated Elizabeth before Macho met her, even going as far as to show pictures of he and Elizabeth in personal situations. It turned out though, Flair was just good with Photoshop and he doctored the photos. After Savage defeated Flair at WrestleMania 8, Rick tried to steal a kiss from Elizabeth, but ended up getting beat down for his troubles. Her last WWF appearances occurred on the UK Rampage Tour, as she assisted Macho Man in his matches against Shawn Michaels. Savage and Elizabeth divorced in 1992, with the news being published in the WWF magazine but never acknowledged on air. Savage would continue to work for the WWF while Elizabeth was nowhere to be seen. It should be pointed out, and it's no secret either, that Savage was extremely protective of Elizabeth before the divorce. So much so that it made him paranoid with his peers and with Elizabeth herself. There even exist stories of Elizabeth not being allowed out of her locker room unless Savage was with her, which does sound more obsessive than protective. Their divorce sounded like the right thing to do. Even though we cheered for their characters on screen, in reality, 
their relationship sounded horrible. Despite their breakup, Savage and Elizabeth worked together once again in WCW. Honestly, trying to keep track of Elizabeth's work in WCW is quite messy. She returned to manage Savage and Hogan at Clash of the Champions 32 in January of 96, but then turned on Savage weeks later and aligned herself with Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. She then joined the NWO to be beside Hogan in 1996, but when Macho Man joined the NWO, she went back to Macho. In June of 98, Savage joined the Wolfpack in Elizabeth's stead in the white and black. And all during this time, Elizabeth got married and divorced again. Very soon, Liz started having a secret affair with on-screen client Lex Luger. The pair were put together on WCW TV and Elizabeth would manage Lex through most of 99 right up until her final appearance in WCW in mid-2000. Towards the end of her WCW run, Elizabeth also had her first official match against Daphne. Elizabeth would let her contract expire though in mid-2000 and she decided to stay away from wrestling rings. It was apparent though to some workers in WCW that Elizabeth was also abusing drugs in large quantities. Elizabeth would end up taking a reception job at the gym that was owned by Lex Luger and Sting. On April 19th, 2003, Elizabeth was involved in a domestic dispute with Luger. Luger was charged and released on $2,500 bail. All sources here indicate that Elizabeth was going through quite a rough time in the final years of her life. Wrestling fans around the world were shocked a month later. On May 1st, 2003, news broke out that Miss Elizabeth had died. On that day, Lex placed a frantic call to emergency services in Marietta, Georgia, saying that Elizabeth was not breathing. Elizabeth died after overdosing at only 42 years old. Lex was brought in for questioning by police officers, but there was no evidence that he was at fault. He was still arrested, however, after police found over 1,700 pills in his home, along with steroids and growth hormones. The death of Miss Elizabeth was eventually ruled as accidental. The thing that probably makes the story of Elizabeth so sad is just how loved she was and how her life ended. From the quiet and beautiful girl next door to assaults, hard liquor, drug overdoses, she was so popular in the 90s WWF and even when she joined WCW, fans still enjoyed seeing Miss Elizabeth. It was kind of a sight for sore eyes with all the turmoil that was going on within the WCW company. One thing is for sure though, even though WWE have not given her a Hall of Fame induction, no one can take away Elizabeth's honour of being the first lady in professional wrestling. <laughs>